there is mounting evidence that Bitcoin will determine the presidential election of 2024. And the orange man, Donald Trump, has issued some statements that have sent Twitter absolutely ballistic after years of attacks against Bitcoin. Is it possible a Trump election would make the USA the Bitcoin capital of the world, bringing business, entrepreneurship, and freedom back to America, <laughs> unleashing an Omega candle unlike anything we've ever seen? Well, let's find out. Party, party. with the goggles on. Uh, a lot of the smartest people in crypto are moving their businesses out of the U.S. because they're scared of, like, uh, the U.S.'s regulations. Because of the hostility. Correct. Yeah, so crypto is moving out of the U.S. because of hostility toward crypto. Correct. So what are you going to do to stop it? Well, we'll stop it because I don't want that. I don't want that. I want that. If we're going to embrace it, we have to let them be here. The Gensler is very much against it. The Democrats are very much against it. And I say this, uh, a lot of people are very much for it, probably a lot of the people in this group, uh, and I'm fine with it. I want to make sure it's good and solid and everything else, but I'm good with it. Yes, yeah. sir. Morgan. I like how he's like, hey, you with the goggles. But first off, let's let's correct the orange man. I mean, I understand the use of crypto. I know you love selling your NFTs. But Don, there's Bitcoin and there's crypto. Even this guy, the hedge eye guy, you guys remember this guy, the guy that got absolutely dunked on by Michael Saylor. All of your arguments about why you should short Facebook in 2013, they're all wrong. Facebook's trading at 280 bucks a, sh a share. They're all wrong. You should have never sold it ever, ever, ever. What happens to all these wonderful models if 10 billionaires decide to buy one billion dollars of bitcoin each and announce we bought it we're not ashamed of it we're gonna buy more all your models are destroyed completely devastated bitcoin goes to the moon well even he's figuring out that there's bitcoin and there's crypto he was a total hater but you know they all come around eventually so solana breaks back to bear trend today you already had avalanche down there and a lot of these crypto crappers down there bitcoin's teetering on a trend breakdown so it had its move alongside the nasdaq but Bitcoin is not crypto, so pay attention to that. There's an institutionalization of futures, don't forget, in Bitcoin. The rest of this crap, it's crap today. But hey, we got some big news. Let's look at the current state of affairs with Bitcoin and politics because we have massive news and it, it, a clear line is being drawn in the sand. Then we got Gary Gensler's reaction to the U.S. House has voted to overturn the SEC rule. Now, this would have prevented highly regulated financial firms from holding Bitcoin. And let's go ahead and check this out. The vote, 228 for 182 against. Check out this post from Caitlin Long. Here are the 21 Democrats who broke ranks and supported Bitcoin and crypto. She's getting their Twitter handles so we can show gratitude and spread the love. But did you guys see that number? Simulation confirmed. 21 Democrats. Is this a message from Satoshi? Hey, it could be, but again, like I said, there is a line being drawn in the sand. Bitcoin game theory is being played out in real time, and now it's entering the political spectrum. Now, you saw the law, right? Protecting the right for these highly regulated financial entities to custody Bitcoin. Well, we just got this in. President Biden threatens to veto legislation that would allow regulated financial institutions to custody Bitcoin and crypto. Things are getting spicy, my friends. And it is likely that they would overrule the veto as well. And we can see that Bitcoin just keeps continuing to win in a major way and we're looking at it right here in the court of public opinion. Bitcoin is absolutely dominating and it is not a partisan issue. It goes across the aisles because freedom, prosperity, you know, the Bill of Rights, they mean something to a lot of people. And for the Elizabeth Warrens out there, I drink your tears every morning. But Bitcoin is becoming too big for you politicians to be able to with. It was foretold, my friends. Now we're going to break down the top presidential contenders and see who really is the best candidate for Bitcoin advocacy and for adoption. But before we do, let's take a minute to recognize our sponsors the Bitcoin way because history has shown us you can't trust or rely on politicians. And taking self-custody of your Bitcoin has never been more important. Simply Bitcoin Originals are powered by the Bitcoin way. They are your IT team in the Bitcoin world. You know, understanding the why of Bitcoin sometimes isn't challenging, especially in clown world, but the how can be. And at the Bitcoin way, they are here to help bridge that gap, marrying the why to the how. They can help you with all things Bitcoin from setting up your first wallet and node all the way up to inheritance planning, accepting Bitcoin payments for your business, and all aspects of Bitcoin security and privacy. They even work with their clients on configuring routers, devices, and networks, and just improving their overall digital hygiene. Also, growing interest in UTXO management, the Bitcoin way 
has got you covered. All right, now let's get into this. Election 2024, the contenders versus the pretenders. Who is the best candidate in 2024 when it comes to Bitcoin? The candidates are basically locked in. We have six months until the election, and there are plenty reasons to prefer one candidate or the other, or none at all. But for those single-issue Bitcoin voters, we're going to take a look at the top three candidates. But let's get into it, shall we? The contenders. Number one, Joseph R. Biden, the reigning defending undisputed president of the United States. It's not really clear what, if anything, Biden thinks about Bitcoin and crypto. It appears he's never made a direct public statement on the subject. It's a moot point anyway, because his administration has had a full term in office and a pretty extensive legislative track record. And it's not good. Beginning with the executive order on March 9th, 2022, when Biden set the stage for the administration to approach Bitcoin with the whole of government approach to oversight and development of digital assets. It set a policy aimed at exploring CBDCs, investigating the impact of digital assets on climate change, mitigating the evasion of sanctions and other illicit activities. In short, it was to be policy by FUD. And we have a list of many, though not all, actions, regulations, and statements made by the current regime from the past couple of years. Let's go ahead and get started with Janet Yellen's Treasury Department. They have sanctioned the crypto mixer Tornado Cash, proposed a fence and rule using the Patriot Act to require mixers to report all transactions as money laundering concerns. They link mixers to terrorist financing after the October 7th attacks. They also asked Congress to grant them more power to sanction crypto entities in 2023. And it didn't stop there. They proposed an excise tax on miners for electricity use. Better tax those toasters too. And they are leading and playing a central role in the government CBDC exploratory research. Now, during Biden's reign, we also know the SEC has been getting after it. Now, one industry win would be Gensler approval of the spot Bitcoin ETFs. However, it's likely their hands were forced thanks to the rulings against them in the lawsuit by Grayscale. We know the SEC and Gary have been aggressive, bringing enforcement actions against a variety of companies from Kraken, Coinbase, MetaMask, Uniswap, Robinhood, a lot of those shitcoin companies, of course, but we understand their approach. And apparently they've internally designated Ethereum as a security and are unlikely to approve that spot ETF. The DOJ has led several criminal actions, some legitimate, of course, and some questionable. They indicted and arrested the founders of Samurai and Tornado Cash. They brought charges against Binance founder CZ. They charged and arrested early Bitcoiner Roger Ver just recently, and they are investigating Block for alleged complaints compliance violations. Get on board. It's not looking too good for the current regime. Not to mention the IRS being ramped up. Elizabeth Warren, and though she's not technically in the Biden administration, she is the most vocal crypto critic in DC. Claimed Russia was using crypto to avoid sanctions. She sponsored the Digital Asset Anti-Money Laundering Act. Claimed that criminals and terrorists were laundering billions with crypto, which was debunked. And she continues to spread her lies. She called on the EPA and Department of Energy to crack down on mining, actively attacking self-custody, complaining about Iran mining Bitcoin. She reintroduced her legislation claiming crypto is financing drug trafficking and terrorism in 2023, claimed tax evasion was costing the government $50 billion. and she also wrote a letter claiming that crypto was the payment of choice for child abuse. Tom and Hey Apollo was being very friendly. He gave Biden a D plus. I don't know how you get anything above an F after that. Absolutely horrible. But let's move on to our second candidate, RFK. He's the only one of the three without a track record in office, so we have to go by what he's said in recent times. But overall, RFK could be by far the most pro-Bitcoin and crypto candidate with some of his proposals, including backing the dollar with Bitcoin and exempting it from taxes, opposing central bank digital currencies, somewhat bizarrely proposing to put the U.S. budget on the blockchain. Now, he also owns Bitcoin, so that's good. And he has spoken on it a lot. If you really want to understand RFK, go check out his Bitcoin 2023 keynote. He gets a lot of it, but then he had some recent actions with doggy coins and shit. It really makes you wonder if he gets it or not. But in a recent interview 
RFK did say our priority is transactional freedom and promoting America as a hub for cryptocurrency innovation as a way to rebuild the wealth of the middle class to end the war economy. Fiat currency is the product of a war economy. Wars never end because we can print money all the time. Final grade by Thomas at Hey Apollo. He gave him an A and overall compared to what we have, he has been very outspoken and supportive of Bitcoin. Just question some of the shit cornery, but also we are about Freedom. Now let's get to the orange man, Donald Trump. All right, now, as is the case with almost everything Trump, you need to consider what he says separately from what he does. Rhetoric and policy can overlap sometimes, but they have a fairly fluid relationship. And it has certainly been the case with both Bitcoin and crypto. Remember in 2019, after Meta tried to launch uh, Libra, Trump had this to say on the subject, I'm not a fan of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, which are not money and whose value is highly volatile and based on thin air. Unregulated crypto assets can facilitate unlawful behavior including the drug trade and other illegal activity now in that tweet in 2019 donald trump sounds a lot like elizabeth Warren. And at that time, you would have thought, you know, very hostile towards the orange coin. But what about his appointments? For instance, he appointed Hester Pierce, crypto mom to the SEC, who famously dissented from a 2018 rejection of the Bitcoin ETFs and has been loudly pro-Bitcoin for years. Then on the other hand, we know he appointed Steven Mnuchin as Treasury Secretary, who once said that uh, crypto poses a national security threat to the U.S. The regulatory record mixed, but a little uneventful. The financial action task force tightened KYC AML rules for the exchanges and then through the Commodity Futures Trading Commission approved crypto futures products and issued helpful guidance for example by defining what actual delivery is for crypto products. Now post-presidency we gotta look at DJ Donald. Like a lot of people before him, his opinions may have changed according to the demands of fundraising and or how much his bags have inflated. In 2022, he launched Trump Digital Trading Cards, which promptly sold out and netted him several millions of dollars. And then in 2023, he disclosed that he owned 2.8 million in ETH. Then later, after Vivek kind of was stealing the show, Trump brought the highly pro-Bitcoin opponent into his inner circle and may be considering him for a cabinet role. And not to mention the clip where he said, you know, I can live with it. You probably have to do some regulation, but many people are embracing it. More and more, I'm seeing people wanting to pay in Bitcoin. I can live with it one way or the other. Now, this is good too. Along with RFK, Trump has promised to never allow CBDCs. And the House Majority Whip, Tom Emmer, has stated that if the second Trump administration takes place, the president will be a lot more friendly to the Bitcoin and crypto industry. Thomas said, hey, Apollo gave him a final grade of an A. And again, compared to the current administration and what we've been facing for a while, I would say both RFK and Trump are both A's. Now, here's the question, right? Is the orange man just using the orange coin to get votes? Well, probably so. And some people say, hey, color me orange regardless. Some say I saw it a mile away. But the likelihood is that, say, RFK or Trump, with their positive views of Bitcoin, would either one would be very bullish for Bitcoin. Because we know Trump has said he's pro-Bitcoin, RFK pro-Bitcoin. Biden so far squarely opposed to Bitcoin and crypto, but the wildest part, ladies and gentlemen, this is game theory at play. Because you're not going to be able to oppose Bitcoin and hold office or win an election. And you better get ready because of that in the game theory. The Biden pivot is coming soon. So look alive and what I can guarantee, I'm with Dennis Porter. The most pro-Bitcoin presidential candidate will win 2024 and it won't be close. Opt out of the Fiat Clown Show. I think uh, the current economic vision for America is not looking good. And if you don't want to be reliant on politicians and their bullshit policies, you just stack sats. Because at the end of the day, let's go ahead and look at this post from Adam O. Both parties are responsible for this. So when you go to vote, if you are someone who votes, keep this in mind. Don't vote RFK, Trump, Biden. Vote Bitcoin 2024. Let's make America orange. The money is fake and broken. The politics are fake and broken. But the people are waking up to all of this and in a massive way. It's Bitcoin or slavery. Hey, let us know what you think of the news below. Interesting. Get ready because 2024, it's going to get just absolutely bonkers. Stack those sats, baby. Hey, be sure to like, subscribe, share the sound money gospel. Give us a pump. Be sure to follow us on Twitter for all the latest breaking Bitcoin news. And don't miss the number one live Bitcoin only news show on YouTube, Simply Bitcoin Live, coming at you Monday through Friday at 1215 Eastern Standard Time. Now make no mistake, it doesn't take a Trump election to send Bitcoin to a million. 
probably go in there anyway. If you don't believe me, better check that shit out. Hey, and have a good one, guys. I'll catch you all tomorrow. Peace. If you prefer to go down with the ship, fuck you.